Hi there. Welcome to Gnostic Vlog 23. Uh, and this is recorded just before Beltane, so happy Beltane. And uh, the 1st of May, May Day. Um, this is a time when we celebrate the fertility of plants and animals uh, and um, engage in celebrating uh, the birth of summer and the quickening uh, of the vital life of plants and animals um, and reproduction and all the things like that. Um, and of course you will say immediately, well you Gnostics are not very keen on nature, you're not very keen on fertility um, or reproduction <laughs> for that matter. Um, I think it's a bit complicated, more complicated than that though really. Um, I, I, when I made this video I was thinking very much of the of the sort of uh, velvet, the expression the velvet glove over the iron fist. Um, and then that led me to thinking about the whole anatomy of matter uh, and duality itself. Um, but I thought of, had this idea of this beautiful velvet glove you know, which is wondrous and beautiful to behold. Um, and, and, it, and underneath there was this, this terrible iron fist, um, unforgiving and relentless sort of thing. And um, so basically the beauty of nature is, is, the velvet is the velvet glove and the actual realities of nature are, 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 is represented by the iron fist. Um, so that was really how I started thinking about this. Um, so then I started sort of thinking, well, what's, what's underneath the iron fist and, and things like that, really. Uh, so we will look at matter and duality. The first thing we start off with, as far as matter is concerned, or nature, or, or human nature, or the human condition, or the condition of the universe, is, of course, this uh, represented by this circle uh, with, a, with a curve going through it, which represents uh, duality and the adversarial spirit. So we have here, uh, we have two elements uh, fighting each other. Um, this is a prototype of the yin-yang uh, sign in, in, in Taoism. Uh, but there's no circles here. There is just a sort of, um, this curved lines uh, dividing a circle uh, and creating two adversarial forces um, which come together and fight each other basically. Um, and if you think of, of, of nature, uh, if you think of, the, of sentient beings and their bodies, uh, muscles are usually arranged in antagonistic pairs, as they call them. Um, so you get a, a muscle which, which expand, which they, they work in opposite directions to each other to create locomotion or to create respiration, for example. Um, so the adversarial uh, spirit or the algorithm is very crucial, in fact, to the whole of, of life in this universe. Um, it's one of the, you know, it's one of the pillars of duality. Uh, and you, you need the adversarial spirit working within nature, otherwise nature just doesn't seem to work at all. Um, so this is very, very important, and this actually lies at the heart, at the centre of duality, at the centre and the heart of, of matter and the material universe. Um, and the material universe in classical Gnosticism is, is evil, uh, and spirit is, is the good. Um, certainly you can say uh, that matter is dualistic anyway. Um, apart from the dualism that is created by saying matter is evil and spirit is good, uh, which a lot of people find very perplexing nowadays uh, to be faced with that kind of dogmatic statement, as it were. Um, but anyway, so at the, at the heart of, of reality, heart of this reality is duality and the adversarial spirit, uh, represented by, by the things that look like two fish swimming in opposite directions. Um, and then uh, this duality, this adversarial spirit, uh, is present or gives rise to this triangle. Um, and this triangle represents uh, the three faults, uh, as it were, creativity, preservation and destruction, um, without which nothing can actually 
operate or exist. Everything uh, is created, everything is preserved for as long as it possibly can, and then everything is destroyed. Uh, and the energy just gets recycled, obviously. So uh, the triangle and the circle are kind of are kind of blend into one thing, really. Uh, but they show, but they're stylized here, represented in a stylized form. Uh, and then uh, outside the triangle is the square, which represents the elemental forces earth, fire, air and water. Um, and so creativity, uh, preservation and destruction is found within air, fire, uh, earth and water, you know, in, in the four elements, um, which, which themselves contain, of course, uh, the adversarial spirit. Um, and, this, um, and this is found inside the iron fist, and the iron fist represents scarcity. Um, and threat and accident and uh, mort mortality uh, and and vulnerability, one might say, um, and uh, and on these uh, on on this scarcity and on the sentient beings that live in this scarcity, uh, the quipot or the demons feed. They feed off the fear uh, of of scarcity, basically, uh, and it all boils down to that. Um, and outside the outer outer circle represents the velvet uh, the velvet glove, uh, which represents the beauty of nature, the attractiveness of nature, uh, and we go in, they sort of feed into the romantic the nineteenth century romantic idea of of the supremacy of nature, um, and the sort of pantheistic idea that nature is the good. Um, and, uh, and and the beauty of nature. So the sunrise and the sunset. Uh, and, the, and the green hills are uh, very beautiful um, to behold, um, and uh, this and but these sort of spiky things here, these these spiky things um, throughout uh, nature, energy is dispersed. Um, but this also represents uh, human reactions, the human world, um, and tipped with poison because. Um, uh, the human reaction to scarcity is fear, and then from fear comes aggression, uh, and from aggression comes war, uh, and all the horrors of that, and xenophobia, and and, and all the rest of it. So, um, you know, so underneath the the beauty of nature uh, is scarcity, uh, and laid over the beauty of nature is is, is the reaction of human beings, which is fear. Uh, and aggression, um, and so you you know it gives rise to the human world, um, and the idea of uh, uh, of what happens, in the, which is also natural. I mean, all our reactions as human beings are, of course, as natural as nature itself. Um, now, in the nineteenth century, there was a sort of division made between nature uh, and industrialized man, uh, but in fact, it's all it's all nature, really. Um, uh, and the na and the industrialized uh, humanity is is an is an outcrop of nature anyway. <laughs> you know, I mean, iron is natural, and smelting iron is natural, and building uh, and building bridges um, has its roots in nature. Uh, indeed, the design for many mechanical objects is 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 based on thing insects and and animals anyway. Um, so you know, it's all nature is at the heart of everything. Um, but of course, um, you know, we don't have to go into fear as a result of scarcity. We can go into altruism, kindness, compassion, and um, uh, and we can redis redistribute, um, re uh, you know, resources fairly, uh, as in the feeding of the of the five thousand, of the parable of Jesus feeding the five thousand with the loaves and the fishes. Um, you know, so there's no, you know, so we have a choice. I mean, the reaction that we that we that can arise from fear and from scarcity, it doesn't have to be uh, destructive. Uh, it, it can be preserving, it can be creative. Uh, but at the heart of all this is the duality which I, which I presented first, at the heart of all matter. Um, so this is really anatomy of, of, of matter, uh, of the material universe. And um, it is this material universe uh, that Gnostics seek to transcend. Uh, but at the same time, there's no doubt that fertility and reproduction and the wonder of life and the, and the beauty of nature, uh, I mean, they can't be denied. Um, 
not without uh, going into a peculiar kind of uh, of life denying duality uh, on the path of of Gnostics. So, if you don't uh, if you don't accept that nature is beautiful and inspiring, uh, then in fact you risk going into a into a dualistic frame of mind, um, which is what the demiurge wants you to to go into. Uh, so again, uh, you know. The, the demiurge or his agents uh, can feed off uh, that sense of duality, that sense of repugnance uh, that a Gnostic could develop for, for nature and for life and for their own lives and for the lives of their loved ones. Uh, so it could be a kind of, uh, you know, you, you, you fall into the trap of duality, whichever way uh, you turn on this. Um, so transcendence is, is, is not just a matter of rejection. Uh, it, it's in fact, it's nothing to do with rejection. It's something actually, you're actually um, sort of projecting your imagination and your consciousness uh, on, onto something which definitely transcends the entire picture that I've presented here, and all the elements of this picture you wish to transcend. Uh, but if you start to reject this picture that I've created. Uh, you will go in uh, to the duality that you're trying to escape from. Um, that, that's, the, that's the essential point to grasp here, I think, really. Um, so at this time of Beltane or Bieltana, uh, it, it is a good time um, to dance around the Maypole, uh, which is what I intend to do on, on Friday, um, because, on May the 1st, uh, you know, because uh, it, it's, it's good to... It's good to acknowledge uh, that nature is attractive, uh, that there are loads of things in nature uh, that we human beings find attractive. Um, everything from from bodies of uh, adult bodies to the ad the a babies uh, babies bodies uh, because we think they're cute and and that's necessary for 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 survival and fertility and for you know for looking after children and being un being motivated to look after children if you think they're cute. Um, and, uh, you know, it's it's essential part of nature. So um, there's no way Gnosticism should be a, a rejection of nature. Uh, and there's no reason why a Gnostic shouldn't dance around the Maypole with, with other neo-pagans and, and Wiccans and whatever, uh, or even just people that want to celebrate uh, dancing around the Maypole as a, you know, a, as an old, um, as an old... Uh, as a thing that belonged to the to the pre-industrial past sort of thing, you know, uh, which is very much I mean, in in England, uh, Britain, Scotland, you know, people like to celebrate uh, the pre-industrial era uh, and, and the folk folkiness of a pre-industrial er, er, era. Um, and uh, but again, you know, uh, it's 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 celebration, it's frivolity. Um, it's 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 happiness, it's joy, it's um, joyousness. Uh, it's something that you know that you that is okay to to be, uh, you know, um, because you know it could be that some Gnostics uh, become mis you know become uh, misanthropists. Um, uh, that is, people that hate humanity uh, and and even hate nature. Uh, you know, um, I mean, I know Stefan Hoyland says he gets no pleasure <laughs> from looking at nature, but I mean, he says that with a, you know, he's just really joking uh, because, of course, we are hardwired, I think, to appreciate beauty. Um, and animals, of course, you know, have beautiful foliage or birds in order to attract a mate. So, you know, beauty is something that that uh, is part of nature, is part of, of fertility and attraction. Um, and you, you'd be, you know, there would be something wrong with you, really, if, if you didn't acknowledge that on one hand. But on the other, as Gnostics, you look at, you look for transcendence uh, on the other hand. Uh, and you, you go in, you go in, you introspect, you go into yourself in order to find uh, the roots of that transcendence. Um, and you could argue, of course, that the roots of transcendence of matter is matter itself, is to be found in matter itself, which is a contradiction. Um, and of course, in the in the in the worlds of the demiurge, contradiction is is something which you have to live with as well. Um, contradictions. There are contradictions existing all over the place. 
um, so many it's hard to enumerate them all. Uh, and uh, you know, Gnosticism also has its own contradiction, a uh, self-contradiction, which uh, which is Gnosticism as it manifests uh, in the world of the Demiurge, of course, because everything that manifests in the world of the Demiurge is going to be adversarial, contradictory, uh, prone to accident, prone to threat, prone to scarcity, prone to fear, uh, fear generation. I mean, you know, think that anything that can go wrong will go wrong uh, in these worlds, including Gnosticism itself, as it were. Um, and yet, despite of that, uh, uh, it's still possible, Gnostics claim, uh, to to transcend um, even in the here and now uh, the uh, transcend matter uh, and to create a spiritual path for the individual to follow uh, in this life, um, and uh, and it does so even despite being in self contradiction, as it were. Um, so uh, yes, um, happy Belte, uh, and and find a maypole to skip around, <laughs> um, and celebrate fertility of animals and plants uh, with love. Uh, you know, make love in the centre field, as the song says. Um, roll around on 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 the on the grass or the dirt uh, in order to encourage the plants and trees and and flowers and animals to do the same thing to to get to get fertile <laughs> to get reproducing um and uh never mind basically if this seems like a contradictory position to take uh if you pardon the pun uh if, if you're a gnostic uh because i don't see that it is much of a you know it, it well so who who cares if it is a contradiction sort of thing um, and I think that frivolity and joyousness should be part of any meditation, um, even if depression and universal sorrow is also part of the same meditation. I, I think you can have very mixed emotions uh, going into introspection or meditation or contemplation. Um, you can have very mixed emotions as you seek transcendence, for that matter. Um, and I and I think it's something you're just going to have to deal with, really, on some level or another. 